Salutations to all our future judges. In this video, we are going to see Indian Evidence Act 1872. But before going into the video, I would like to make few requests to our viewers as well as the subscribers. Kindly do not skip the video. Watch the video from the beginning till the end. If you skip in between, you may be missing very crucial information or very crucial aspects which have been explained. Hence, watch from the beginning till the end. And next request is, please do have a notebook and a pen with you. Because various questions which have been asked in Evidence Act in various exams would be mentioned or would be stated. And in addition to this, idea would be given as to how questions could be framed in a particular section. It is very important for you. So you all need to make a note of all these aspects. And in addition to this, some additional illustrations would also be given while teaching the act. Hence, you please make a note of all those additional illustrations as well. They would be of absolute help to you in understanding the particular section. And in addition to this, various ways or techniques would be taught which would help you to remember those sections or to say some memory techniques would be given. This would be really helpful to you in remembering the sections when you go to the exam. I hope this video would be of absolute and great utility to you. Now, let us see section 79. Presumption as to genuineness of certified copies. How can you presume whether a certified copy is genuine? General fact is that when a copy is being produced of a document which is being certified, then the court will presume that it is a genuine document. It is a genuine certified copy, provided it is duly certified by officer of the central government or the state government. However, it should be ensured that the document is executed in a manner which is provided by the law and in the format which has been given by the law. That is very essential. And in addition to this, Further, the court will presume that while signing this document or certifying this document, the person or the official who has put that sign was holding that particular post or official character which he claims while signing this paper or certifying this paper. Section 80. Presumption as to documents produced as record of evidence. Imagine a situation where a document is produced before the court. And that document is considered to be an evidence or produced as an evidence or any part of the evidence. In this, there are three scenarios which we are discussing. One is a evidence given by a witness in a judicial proceeding or before any officer authorized by law to take such evidence. The witness is coming before the judge and is giving or deposing or is giving an evidence or he is going before an officer who is authorized by law to take an evidence or if there is a statement or confession by any prisoner or accused which is also done in accordance with the law in all these cases and particularly with respect to statement or confession it should be signed by any judge or magistrate in all these situations the court will presume that the document which is produced is genuine and that the circumstances under which it is given is also genuine and the person who signed is true and that evidence, statement or confession was duly taken and it was accordance with law. So, these aspects are presumed by the court. That is section 80. Section 81. So, presumption as to gazettes, newspapers, private acts of parliament and other documents. The court will always presume that these documents are genuine provided it is kept substantially in the form required by law. The law will state like this particular gazette or newspaper or private act should be in this form. And if it is confirming to that particular form, then it can be accepted. And if it should be produced from proper custody, that is also equally important. And this can be from any official gazette or government gazette or even under the British crown, that is also accepted. Or act of parliament of the United Kingdom, that is also accepted. In all these cases, the court presumes that it is true. Section 81A. Presumption as to gazettes in electronic form. 
if the gazettes are produced in electronic form provided it is in the form required by law and it is produced from proper custody the court will presume the genuineness of every electronic record purporting to be the official gazette next is 82 presumption as to document admissible in england without to proof or seal or signature imagine a scenario where a document is accepted in england or ireland the court of justice in england or ireland without proof seal or stamp or signature authenticating so in that case if that court is accepting this without seal or stamp then our courts can also accept it it is as simple as that and the person signing it is deemed to be holding that position when he is signing imagine he is a judicial officer then in that case the court will presume that the person who has signed this was working as a judicial officer at the time of signing this provided this document is admissible both in England or Ireland. Section 83 deals with presumption as to maps or plans made by authority of government. Imagine a map is being made or a plan is made, being made by the central government or the state government or the person who has obtained the or the organization or the authority working under the central government or state government. So, in that map or plan, everything is deemed to be accepted and everything is considered to be accurate. However, the very important thing is, if that map or plan is made for any specific purpose, for example, if a map is being prepared for a case, for a litigation, in that case, it has to be proved that it, that particular map is accurate. If it is a general map or a general plan, that is assumed to, to be accurate. But if it is for a specific purpose, then it should be proved that the map is or plan is accurate. Now let us move to section 84. Presumption as to collection of laws and reports of decisions. Under this particular section 84, the court will always presume that the book which is printed or published by the government with respect to the laws of that country or the reports of the decisions of the courts of the country published by government is deemed to be genuine. Section 85. Presumption as to power of attorney. If a power of attorney is authenticated by a notary public or court or judge or magistrate or by Indian consul or vice consul or representative of the central government, it is deemed to be so executed and authenticated. It is deemed to be presumed that the power of attorney is proper. Section 85A Presumption as to electronic agreements. If there is an electronic agreement, it is deemed that the electronic signature of the parties was so concluded by affixing the electronic signature of the parties. You can understand this in a very simple manner. If electronic signature is put, it is deemed that the party has put that electronic signature. Court will presume so with respect to electronic agreements. Section 85B deals with presumption as to electronic records and electronic signatures. If there is an electronic signature or electronic record, the court shall always presume that if it is from a secure source, then it has not been altered at that specific point of time, which the secure status of the particular electronic record relates to. And in subsection 2, if there is a proceeding which involves secure digital signature, the court shall always presume, unless the contrary is proved, that the electronic signature is affixed by the subscriber. He has an intention of signing it and he has approved that particular electronic record except in the case of a secure electronic record or secure electronic signature nothing in the section shall create any presumption relating to authenticity and integrity of an electronic record or electronic signature so whatever is secure it is deemed to be acceptable and if it is not secure presumption will not lie as simple as that section 85c in this section 85c the presumption as to electronic signature certificates are taken into consideration. So, if there is electronic signature certificate, then generally the information in that particular certificate are presumed to be correct, unless the contrary is proved. However, the information specified as subscriber information, if not verified, will not be considered or will not be presumed. If the certificate was accepted by the subscriber in all these cases. To be more precise, if the certificate was accepted by the subscriber, then the court will presume that the information contained in the electronic signature certificate is genuine. However, if the subscriber has not verified the information pertaining to him, then this presumption will not lie. 
With respect to section 86, the presumption is to certified copies of foreign judicial records. Generally, these judicial records are considered to be genuine provided they are accepted in their own country in a particular format which has been specified and there would be some stipulation or some rules or regulations which are provided for certification of copies of those judicial records and if those ideas or if those rules are being followed in that case the presumption will lie that the document is kind of genuine and if there is an officer who is a political agent living in a territory or place which is not part of India or her majesty's dominions. In that case, that particular person is deemed to be a representative of the central government or the person acting on behalf of the central government, as simple as that. Now, let us move to section 87, presumption as to books, maps and charts. In this section 87, if the court is referring any book for any information on public or general interest one and uh, the court is referring to any published map or chart the court is checking all those books and the maps and charts and uh, if there are any relevant facts in that book or map or chart then the court will presume that it is to be genuine and uh, this particular book was written and published by the person at a particular time and place by whom it is said to be published or written this section 88 speaks about presumption as to telegraphic message. If a telegraphic message is sent to a person, it is deemed that the message which is received was actually the message which was sent. However, there shall be no presumption with respect to the person who has delivered it. However, this particular section is not that important. So, you can just uh, try to understand this because telegraphic messages are no more in existence now. Now, let us move to section 88a. Presumption as to electronic messages. If a mail is delivered, email, in that case, the court will presume that the email which is sent is the actual email which was fed into the computer for transmission. And however, the court shall not make presumption with respect to the person who has sent this message. There is an explanation which is being given. Let us see what is the explanation. The expression addressee and originator shall have the same meaning as referred to in Information Technology Act, clauses B and DZA of subsection 1 of section 2. Now, let us move to section 89. Presumption as to due execution etc. of documents not produced. Imagine a scenario where the court is asking a person to produce a document and he does not produce the document. Then in that case, the court will presume that the document was attested, stamped and executed in the manner required by law. That is section 89. Now, let us move to section 90. This particular section is very, very important. Many times ex exams contained this particular section or questions from this particular section. So, this is very important. Please understand this in a proper manner. If a document which is 30 years old is produced before the court, the court will generally presume that it is in the handwriting of the person who is said to have signed the document or it is the signature of that particular person provided it is from the right custody. That is very important. This is section 90 and in addition to this they have given an explanation also. We will see what is the explanation. Documents are considered to be in proper custody if they are actually with the person naturally with whom that document will lie. However, if a person is taking a defense that the custody is improper, then if it is proved that the legitimate origin is there for the particular document, then custody becomes proper. Or if the circumstances of a particular case proves that the origin is probable, in that case also the document becomes genuine or the custody becomes proper. This explanation is equally applicable to section 81 also. They have given some illustrations. Let us see those illustrations as well. A has been in possession of a landed property for a long time. He produces a document. Then in that case, the custody is proper. A produces deeds relating to landed property of which he is mortgagee. The mortgagee is in possession. Then the custody is proper. A, who is a connection of B, produces a deeds relating to lands in B's possession. So, this documents were deposited with B for safe custody by A. So, this B is producing the document, then the custody is considered to be proper. 
Now let us move to section 90A, presumption as to electronic records which are 5 years old. If an electronic record is 5 years old and it is produced from the proper custody or the custody which the court deems to be proper, in that case the court presumes that the signature is correct and the person who has executed has done it in a proper manner or it has been signed by a person who is authorized to sign it and everything is correct in that particular document. Now, let us move to explanation. So, electronic records are said to be in proper custody if they are in a place where they are naturally supposed to be. If someone is taking a defense that the custody is not proper or the custody is improper, in that case, if somebody is proving that the document had a legitimate origin or the circumstances they prove where there is a probability that the origin is genuine or the origin is probable. In that case, the electronic record is deemed to be in proper custody. This explanation applies to section 81A also, with this chapter 5 is completed. I hope you would have liked the video. If you like the video, please do press the thumbs up button and do share the video with your friends and motivate them. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe the channel and share the channel with your friends. If you feel that I have left something in this video or you want me to change the way in explanations are given for the sections, please do let me know by way of comments. Let us join hands together and contribute for a learned society. Thank you.